our first out. Uh, let's talk about the Atlanta Braves uh, because you know we uh, we sort of predicted early on in the year that they were they were going to be out, outrageously good. I think everybody, pr- uh, pretty much everybody, did. Um, they sit right now sixty one and fifty six. They're seven and a half back of the division with Philly, um, and they're hanging on for dear life for an NL wild card spot right now. The Diamondbacks and the Padres have both jumped them. Uh, and jumped them fairly comfortably for the most part, about a three and a half game, four game lead over the Braves at this point. There, are, the Mets are only a half game back of that spot. The Cardinals and the Giants are both a game and a half back of that spot. So, Dalton, what do you think? I know that Atlanta. This is a season that kind of got away from them, right? A lot of injuries, Acuna, Strider, the whole bit. A lot of underperforming with Olson and Austin Riley, and you know. You know, it's just it's been a tough year for the Braves. Um, so as of right now, what do you think? Are they a playoff team? Will they end up being a playoff team? At this point, I don't think they are. And I, I think at the end of the day, they came into the trade deadline needing to make some kind of decision. And the the decision options that were in front of them were essentially like punt on this season entirely because you are missing Spencer Strider and Ronald Acuna and Ozzy Albies and on and on, right? Or go all in and try to go 2021 about this season. I think they didn't really pick either of those lanes, and they kind of straddled the fence. Um, And look, Jorge Soler has been a good pickup for them, just like it figured that he would be. But they clearly didn't do enough. And they didn't do much at all to support themselves from a pitching operation standpoint. Like, even if this team does get into the postseason, you're relying on Chris Sale to stay healthy for another two months and stay healthy through the postseason, which is a question. If he does, he's been really good. But after Chris Sale, it's Max Fried has kind of had an up and down year. Reynaldo Lopez is really good, but I'm not sure how many people would would believe in him as a top two starter in the postseason. And then after that, I mean, Charlie Morton's a fossil. Spencer Schwellenbach looks great, but he's a rookie. I don't know how long they're going to let him, you know, how long they want to ride him for. Um, There's a lot of questions for this team in the rotation. There are even more questions for this team in the bullpen. And frankly, offensively, they've just been bad. Um, I mean, just looking up and down, up and down the lineup, right? I mean, obviously, Marcelo Zuna is having something of a career season. Austin Riley has been good. But beyond that, like, obviously, you don't have Albies or Acuna. Sean Murphy has been awful, awful. Michael Harris and Matt Olson are combining for a 1.2 war right now. Like, there's just not a whole lot to be excited about lineup wise with this team, which is just not something I don't think any of us expected to be saying about them. Yeah. Um, and so I think it, it's looking more and more like a lost season for them. Fangraphs still has their playoff odds at 62%, um, odds of winning the division all the way down to 9% now. The problem for Atlanta is I think the Padres and Diamondbacks are both getting in. Like, I think those are the best two wild card teams at this point. Yeah. Um, and that's assuming the Padres don't pass the Dodgers and turn the Dodgers into a wild card team. But I think three teams from the NL West are getting in, meaning Atlanta is going to have to beat out, obviously, the Mets, but also the Cardinals and the Cubs. You know, I'm not sure that – I'm just not sure that they can. Like, the Cardinals actually went in at this deadline. Yeah. And I think, are, I think are probably better equipped than the Braves right now. Even the Giants from a pitching perspective and getting to play the Braves the next couple nights, I think even the Giants might be in a position to potentially overtake Atlanta. So I think at this point, like there are too many ways for them to lose. I think this is a team that has played so many big games down the stretch the last few years that I wonder if there's a little bit of of fatigue setting in of like, well, shit, man, like clearly this isn't our year. Like we're going to get our guys back next year. Let's let's reload and fire again next year. Like like you you do wonder at, at at what point do some of these Braves players start to almost look forward to a quiet October? I I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm doubting their heart a little bit too much, but I'm just not sold on really anything about this team. Like losing two out of three on the road in in Colorado, it just doesn't get much worse. Yeah. No, I I, I think here's the thing. Um, I thought that 
once they lost Acuna for the year, and Acuna was not playing well when he got hurt, right? I, I say that over and over again. Strider getting hurt, obviously that's a that's a big loss. Um, I kind of thought from the beginning that this was going to be a lost season for them. And a lot of it had to do with not only the injuries, but how well the Phillies were playing, right? It was about how well, um, how dominant the Phillies were, because I almost thought by the beginning of the year, like the division is going to get pretty close to out of question for them. Like that's not going to be a winnable spot because of how good the Phillies were. But the thing is though, is that like, and, and this is, I think what's, what's more surprising to me than anything else is that, you know, it, it like you said, right. I, obviously Marcelo Zuna has been phenomenal this year. He's an MVP candidate, no doubt. But like, if you compare Matt Olson this year and Matt Olson last year, I mean, they're not even close to the same player, right? right. Like Matt Olson's got, Matt Olson has 20 home runs this year. I mean, I, I think by this time last year, he had 45, <laughs> I'm making up a number, but like, like that's the kind of difference I think that we're seeing with where they are right now. Austin Riley's been fine. I suppose he's got an eight Oh five OPS. That's pretty good. I think that's below what they expected of him to begin the year. Um, and I agree, like you said, I mean, it, like the guys like Sean Murphy and, and, and Sean Murphy has missed a very good portion of the year, right. In fairness, but at the same time, you're right. He has been dreadful. Michael Harris is getting on base less than 30% of the time, right? Like, like there are legitimate struggles, um, in this lineup, I think, especially, and that's something that I don't think either one of us would have predicted, at the, at the beginning of the year, we looked, I'll even pull up the, the graphic. See, I, I have them still right here. We looked at this lineup, right? And we were just like, okay, like, that's just, that's like, that's better than every lineup in the league. Like it, it just is right. Like, cause at this point you're looking at a, a good seven guys down the lineup that could have potentially been all-stars this year, right? Orlando Arcia has given them some pretty solid stuff. And Jared Kelnick is, you know, talented, never really put it together, but talented enough. We thought he could figure it out in Atlanta, right? But literally through that entire roster, we're just like, okay, all-star, 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 all-star. You picked Chris Sale as one of the guys that to, to look at for Cy Young, and you were, <laughs> excuse me, you were right. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I, it's just, if you're going to ask me today if I think they make the playoffs, I don't. I don't. And I think I genuinely think the team that's going to do it is St. Louis. Like I just like I think St. Louis has geared up from a pitching perspective to the point where, like, <clears throat> like they can they can legitimately go into a playoff series. And I don't even know if I would say feel confident about their rotation, but they could stack up in some sense, right? So, and I don't know that I feel the same about the Braves on an uh, on an offensive level. Now, again, there's always the possibility that they put it together, but we're also in mid-August. Is this just what they are at the moment? So, I don't know. That's how well, I feel. The, the thing with Atlanta that you have to remember, too, they got off to a good start in April. Yeah. Like, they had, I think, the second-best record in baseball at the end of April. And they've been, I think, a little bit below 500 since then. I mean, th like, here, here's the thing about what the, the, about what you said that's, that's astounding. You mentioned early on in the season, it felt like, oh, Philly's just so damn good. They're running away with it. Philly's on pace for 93 wins. Like, Philly's only 20 games over 500. That's not a team that should be running yeah. away with a division unless there's just nobody who's any good in their division. And right now, there really isn't. I mean, Atlanta and, and the Mets are both fewer. Are, I mean, you're talking five games and four games over 500. Like, those are teams that are right around average right now. The Nationals are, are below right. average. The Marlins are terrible. Like, what ended up happening there is the NL East ended up just being kind of bad because the Braves fell down to average. The Mets are kind of who we thought they were. And the other two teams were never going to be competitive. So the thing that's got to be frustrating for the Braves is it's not like this Phillies team turned out to be a juggernaut. They were a juggernaut early, right. but they, they've clearly come back down to earth. Um, yeah. So much so that now they're tied with the Dodgers for the best record in, in the NL. Um, and and I don't think there's a Dodger fan out there who feels like we're who feels like we're in a good spot. So you know, <laughs> it, 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 there's no. I think what's most surprising when you look at the National League in general is there's no greatness at all. 
Like there's no team that looks that like it's just been head and shoulders the best. Um, and despite that, the Braves are still on the verge of falling out of the race. Like I think that says something that both of those things can be true uh, at the same time. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I th- and I think the same thing can be said throughout the entirety of baseball, right? I think throughout the entirety of baseball, there is there are no like truly great dominant teams in the league right now. There aren't, right? Like the even in the American League, the Baltimore Orioles right now have the best record in the American League. They're seventy and forty nine. Like they're they're good. They're they're very good. But even the Orioles for the I mean the Orioles, the Yankees obviously had this treacherous run in June and July, right? Treacherous run. Baltimore was not much better than the Yankees at that point. Like Baltimore at at about the same time was playing very, very poorly. And I think, you know, it's a lot of like what I said before, where, you know, you had so many teams that like, through the it's so many teams that dominated early on in the year just came back down to earth right the phillies did it the dodgers ended up getting injured the yankees the orioles i i mean the only team that really has kind of been pretty steadfast is the guardians but the guardians have been you know uh, we're surprised at how good the guardians are but this is kind of how they've been all year so i don't know i i it's it's a very interesting thing I just I'm I, I think I'm leaning towards this is just a lost season for the Braves. It just is. I don't see a rebound. Yeah, I mean to 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 give you a sense of how different this has been than last year, right? So the Braves right now are six games over or five games over five hundred, right? Sixty one and yeah. fifty six. On this date last summer, the Phillies were sixty five and fifty three. So the Phillies were two and a half games better than the Braves have been all year. That Phillies team had an 11 game deficit in the division because Atlanta was 75 and 41. Yeah, that's so sick. Like right now, there's not a single team in baseball with a winning percentage over 600. Last season, at the last season on this date, there were four. So, I mean, it's just like nobody is really running away. And even in a series, even in a season like that, it feels like a lost season for Atlanta. So, um, the, the thing, too, that I think is fascinating about them, and then we can move on to, to other things, but what I think is particularly fascinating about them is everybody has reacted pretty unanimously as if the Braves are organizational geniuses for signing all of their young guys long term. The problem with that is some of what we're seeing now, where when you invest in a Michael Harris really early, before the league can even adjust to him, you don't actually know what that guy's going to be for the next decade. Like yep. when you're signing a catcher in his mid twenties to a 10 year deal, you don't actually always know what you're going to get. Right. Like Acuna, you know, look, I mean, the injuries are the injuries. I don't, you can never blame them for signing a guy like that to the deal that they did, but you're running into a situation now where you have so much money tied up in either injured or unproductive players and this is the risk you run when you invest that much money early on. Like you don't leave yep. yourself flexible and it puts the Braves in a position now where this year, next year, the following year, either this core is going to get back to what they were or the Braves don't have a whole lot of other answers they can turn to. Yeah. Yep. No, it's a hundred percent. Right. It's a hundred percent. Right. And I, and I think they're like, I think most of the baseball world would be stunned or would have been stunned if we were to tell them like, Hey, five months from now, we're going to be having this conversation about the Braves. Yeah. Like, would have been stuck. And not even just about like them underperforming this year, but like, was it really smart for them to, to lock up guys that early? Cause then it leaves your options really kind of narrow. I think everybody would have been just like, you guys are fucking nuts for even yeah. thinking that. 